So up until this point, we've been pretty much dealing with formatting. Uh, and formatting just affects how it looks, but not how it's being stored. And what we're going to do next is start working with some input masks, and those do affect how things are being stored. So we're going to go back into the design view. And you can actually use input masks to ensure that the data that the user enters is a little bit more accurate. So we're going to start with work order. And we are going to require that the work order number be five digits. Okay, so this is, they're going to have to enter five digits for this. And the reason it's a text field is because uh, you typically will make fields text if you're never going to do arithmetic on them. So this is not a numeric field because we're never going to add the numbers or average the work order numbers <laughs> or anything like that and never be used in a calculation. Therefore, it's a text field. So what we're going to do to ensure that numbers are entered here is down in our input mask, we're going to enter five zeros. And you will enter a zero if you are requiring a digit. So we've got one zero for each of the five digits that is required. If the digits were optional, we would put in the number nine. Okay. If we were dealing with letters, instead of numbers, we'd be dealing with an uppercase L for required and a question mark for optional. Now, there may be an instance where you have no idea what they're going to enter. It might be alphanumeric, which is letters and numbers, in which case, if it's required, you would do a capital A, and if it's optional, you would do a lowercase a. So in our case, all five digits are required, so we have zeros, and we're going to key in a semicolon. Now, after the semicolon, we need to tell Access if it needs to save um, additional characters that are in the field entry area. Uh, for example, if we were keying in a phone number and there were dashes and parentheses entered, do we want to save those with the number? Um, in our case, we have nothing additional. Okay, so we're just going to do a semicolon. If we had some additional data we wanted saved, we would put in a zero. So a zero means, yes, save all of that additional formatting data. Um, and if you don't want to save it, if there isn't going to be any, just put in a semicolon. Now, the last thing you need to tell it is how should the placeholder look when we're in datasheet view? So right before we start typing, what should the user see? And the default here is an underscore, and that is what we're going to uh, enter. And an underscore just displays as a line, you know, like an entry line. Um, I mean, we could display asterisks or hashtags or whatever. Um, what you typically see is the entry line, so that is what we're going to use. So um, that pretty much formats that one uh, for input. And we're going to also do an input mask on the two dates. And this is going to affect how they're going to be stored. Now the tricky thing with the dates is how they are displayed is controlled by format. And they're going to be stored differently than how we are displaying them. So that makes it a little bit confusing. So when you're thinking about the input mask, you shouldn't even be looking at the format, okay? Because they're two totally separate things. So the input mask is, how do I want this to store? And how do I want the user to actually enter this? Because it's going to affect how the user enters the data. Um, so when the user enters the data, we're going to have them enter a three-letter month. We're going to have them enter a two-digit day and a four-digit year. That is what they're going to be entering. And so that is going to be three L's because that is indicating that we are requiring three letters. Okay, and then we want a slash displayed. Now this is where there's a typo in the book. They, they have the slash going the wrong way. Do the slash this way or 
you're not going to be able to enter any data. It's going to be messed up. <laughs> so I do the slash this way. Um, then we're requiring two digits. And then we're going to do a slash. And then we're requiring four digits. Okay. Now, for our text, we would like the first letter to be capitalized. So we're going to do a greater than sign in front of the first L. For the next two letters, we want them in lowercase. So we're going to put a less than sign in front of the next two letters. Okay. And that is our string. So we're going to put in a semicolon because we're done. And we would like the slashes saved with the text and the numbers. Okay. And you'll see the slashes when we go over to datasheet view. They're going to display in between the areas that they need to enter. And so, yeah, we do want those saved. So we're going to go ahead and put in a zero indicating save the slashes with the data that is being entered. Okay, then we have to put in our last semicolon. And the way we want this to look when the users see it is the underscore. So we're going to put in an underscore here. Okay, so that is our whole input mass. So if we keyed in like June 10th, 2018, we would have a capital J U N slash 10 slash 2018. That is what the user would see when they first enter it. That is what would get saved. Okay. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it. Oh, I'm going to press control C and then I'm going to go, go down to service date, click on input mask and I'm going to press control V as in Victor and paste it. Okay, so that is going to be entered the same way. So our work order date and service date, the way the user enters those is going to be the exact same. So we're going to go ahead and save, and then we're going to go over to data sheet view. And we're going to go ahead and enter a work order number. And just to test this, well, we get to the beginning. We're going to just do four digits instead of five. And we get a little error, so I'm going to come back up here and add in that fifth digit, and now I'm okay. And our customer 1000 needs more help, and the tech person is number 10, and we're going to enter our first date. And as I type, you will see the slashes. Those are going to be saved with the data. And it's displaying the underscores until I type in the letters. So at the end, when we keyed in that underscore, that is where you see it. Okay, so when it saves, it's going to save exactly like this. Okay, after we did the format and we did the semicolon, we put in a zero. And that means that these slashes are going to get saved with the data. Okay, so I'm going to press tab. Now, because we have formatting applied, the minute I press tab, it's going to pick up the formatting. So how it's being entered and how it's being saved is different than how it's being displayed. And so we get a nice short description on this one. Yay. And then we get to the service date. And again, when I press tab, it's going to pick up our formatting requirements. So it's going to display it different than how it's entered and being stored. And it looks like I need to widen that up. There we go. And let's see our hours. And rate. Okay, and at this point, we are done. You do not need to, to worry about printing. You go ahead and save and then close. 